is that a lot of people died in shootings and I want to talk about that if I may so there have been like to my knowledge fucking half a dozen shootings over the past week okay but two of them I guess there's three, the garlic shooting, and then there's the Dayton shooting, and then there's the El Paso shooting. The El Paso shooting is probably the most um, imminently relevant one. I want to talk about this briefly, and then I want to bring it back into sort of a a broader discussion that I have, or or, or that I want to have on these subjects. Um, There's a ton for us to do, but I want to take my time with this particular subject, because this is, uh, this is, uh, uh, I don't know divisive so to those of you who don't know let's google help me out yeah so let's just get the the basic details in the way okay also check it out look i redid my little bottom right thingy do you see look isn't that cute i think it's cute El Paso, a gunman shot and killed at least 22 people in an El Paso Walmart on Saturday. (laughs) Imagine being punished going to Walmart more than you already are going to Walmart. Uh, Possible hate crime, white nationalist document. Okay, so at least 22 people were killed. A great many others were injured. Why do we care about this? Why is it relevant? Um, Well, I imagine the obvious answer is because people died. Um, but that isn't really a very satisfying to me here. We maybe, but that's not a super satisfying answer to me, um, because people die all the time. I know that sounds callous or irreverent, but, um, really people like you're a thousand times more likely to die in a car accident or to heart disease, um, than you ever would be to a shooting. And that's not going to change mass shootings while horrific and unpredictable um are always going to constitute a comparatively small portion of deaths in any given society um probably like the like they are so minute that it is conceivable change like a minor law changing like car regulations or uh, or a, and like an osha like bill passing these things would probably have a larger uh, per capita impact on the health and happiness of americans than the complete elimination of mass shootings would so why do they matter well on one hand they're horrific um it is genuinely terrifying to uh to to imagine just going about your day walking into a parking lot and then like watching some fucking white boy in those same rectangular thin framed unfashionable glasses uh unloading like the back trunk of his car and like pulling a fucking ar 15 out of a um a plastic bin and loading it up and then like you know like it's like that's fucking horrific like it's obviously okay um but i'm not but i'm a i'm a reels over fields kind of guy myself that's not why it bothers me so much the real reason why shootings are a problem is because they are and always will be representative of a more uh uh, sadistic pathological thought pattern in in a society so there's a term called stochastic terrorism um i'm sure most of you have heard it i didn't exactly invent the term stochastic terrorism well actually we can just i need a new fucking keyboard so stochastic means randomly determined having a random probability distribution or pattern that may be analyzed statistically but may not be predicted precisely so what the fuck does that mean statistically random not individually predictable however a pattern emerges nonetheless so The way this works in practice, if we want to dip into a paint stream really quick. Dude, no, that's a box. I'm a leftist. We don't deal in boxes, okay? You're valid no matter what your shape and size is. Hmm? There we go. Okay, so the way this typically works, all right, let's just say 
hypothetically, all right, we're going to be speaking in hypotheticals here. Imagine you live in a society or a country or an environment, any sort of um, space where information is being passed from the top down that is highly distressing, okay? It could be anything, N news of climate change, uh, war, anything like that. Um, just anything that get people's emotions riled up, okay? People respond to these pressures in very different ways. Some people are very calm. They wait things out. Some people are utterly oblivious to what's going on in their society. Some people like uh, diligently prepare. They do what they can. They stock emergency supplies or they keep in contact with relatives in other areas to see if they have like fail safes or fallback plans. These things, this is emergency preparedness. It happens everywhere all the time for a great many reasons but there are some people who are um less passively inclined some people want to do something about the problem now this has taken different forms um in different instances uh, has anyone ever heard the stories of back when environmental terrorism was a little bit more popular than it is today funny because it should <laughs> If there was ever a time for it to be popular, it would be today. But um, there was a thing that protesters would do. You've all heard they you'd tie yourself to trees or whatever so they wouldn't cut them down. But what they would also do sometimes is they would nail long stakes. This is this is a cross view, okay? They would nail long stakes into the trunk of a tree so that when loggers would come to chop them down with chainsaws, with the chainsaw If the chainsaw ever hit that stake, the belt of the chainsaw is designed to cut through wood, not steel. The belt would break, meaning that the chainsaw spinning very, very quickly would send a belt laced with razor sharp spikes flying out in any direction, damaging equipment. And if there was a person nearby, very likely them, people were injured and sometimes killed from this practice. I'm not taking a stance on this uh, right now. I am. Um, um, I, I, I am personally not in favor of the idea of stochastic terrorism against, um, like loggers or whatever. I don't think that's a particularly effective way of making the world a better place. Um, though I can't really blame the motive, whatever the case is, um, sometimes people react to bad news on a societal level in a way that incentivizes them to take action against the thing that they believe poses a threat to them and their well-being. Um, if you take a broad chunk of society, like so, let's say 350 million people, of them, only maybe a percentage, like a very, very, very small fraction of the broader population is going to be so incensed by this that they are going to freak out and try to actually do something about it and of that group a smaller portion still is going to be successful some of these people are going to organize rallies some of these people are going to go on ahead and move to other countries and some of them are going to take violent action it's a very small group of people right here, okay? These people can become many things. Sometimes they become mass shooters. And altogether, this tiny little sliver of white right here and the pixels within it aren't a huge threat to society. They're really not. I know it's very upsetting and I don't want to minimize uh, uh, like anything anyone's going through at the moment, but let's be frank, okay? Like just be realistic about the numbers. In a very broad sense, Mass shootings don't constitute a substantial threat to the well-being and livelihood of the average person in America. They just don't. Here's what does. This. This shit does. Because remember when I said this is all hypothetical? I was lying. This is the number of people who have bought into the Great Replacement Theory. Pushed by a great many people, most famously Lauren Southern, God bless her, out of politics, I hope she chokes and dies. This group of people right here, this giant chunk of the American population, sincerely believes that the, the Constitution, 
in a video game, that the Constitution of America, that its heart, its soul, is under threat, that it is at risk of being destroyed, and that destruction is coming from foreign elements. Some people think it's Mexicans, some people think it's Muslims, those are the two most popular ones these days, but it did used to be the Germans back in the 1880s, the Irish and the Italians back in the early 20th century, it's been at various points the Chinese, the Mexicans, people worried about about the Japanese during World War II. It's a very common, very, very, very predictable American reaction to internal strife is to take that internal strife, bottle it up, seal it, and then label on the bottle product of insert racial group here. This is the problem right here. For every raving mass shooter who writes a manifesto on 8chan and then takes out to the streets to gun down brown people, there are 100,000 sweaty, red-faced, angry Fox News little, uh, 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 what do they call them? The little gross things that babies put in their mouths? Pacifier. Fox News pacifier white boy dipshits who are sitting at home seething. At, um, at how their American way of life is being threatened by the existence of brown people. An enormous number of people. It's fucking insane. Fox News has been pushing this shit for ages. I mean, in the past, we've called it, I, I think, perhaps the rather reductive racist when they say things like, we're being invaded by Hispanics. The cartel are sending their, uh, you know, this wave of invaders. They'll use this language to demonize, to otherize, to make more dangerous than they actually are foreign elements coming into our country. But it's not just racist. Racism in and of itself isn't capable of fostering this kind of antipathy towards um towards um uh, foreign groups of people towards brown people towards muslims racism isn't really enough um because racism at its core is a fundamental belief uh, in the othering between races that one is better than the other that they work better mitts themselves rather with one another something like that but that's not enough to explain what's going on here this is fascism the belief that America's um, demographic constituency of white people is a core component to its strength and stability. The idea that the inclusion of foreign elements can destroy it at its core. The idea that military force and the otherization of minorities must be employed to protect the status quo. This is fascism. And America has had fascism running through its blood for a very, very, very long time. So I don't care about the shooters, okay? They're very, very unimportant to me, okay? I, very unimpressive. Like, very dumb. Very gay, I might say. Very gay, these shooters, okay? These little bitch babies. What I care about is the fact that they are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the broader social problems that we're going to contend with. So with that in mind, I want to read... The manifesto of the El Paso shooter. Okay. I'm going to be reading this and I want to pull some comparisons between the contents of this manifesto and what you might see in fairly typical, fairly mainstream conservative media. Okay. This is a very boring manifesto. I've read it already you know you would think that in a in a in a uh, the a committal of purpose in a manifesto in your dying message you're going to be known news media all across the fucking country you're going to think damn i better put some sick ass shit into this manifesto this better be a sick fucking manifesto People are going to remember me for this. Wow, what's up? Uh, this country got banned for reading this. I know. Okay. Why do you think I can't read chat? Even now, even in separate rooms. Yeah, because I worry. Thank you. Just come on. I don't want you getting banned off. Mm, yeah. Um, I want money. Unbelievable. Even in separate rooms. I'm locking the door. She's going to be mad about that one. Fucking thoughts. Get him out of here. Okay. 
Let's skim. <sighs> About me. In general, I support the Christchurch shooter and his manifesto. This attack is a response to the Hispanic invasion of Texas. They are the instigators, not me. I am simply defending my country from cultural and ethnic replacement brought on by an invasion. Some people will think this statement is hypocritical because of the nearly complete ethnic and cultural destruction brought to the Native Americans by our European ancestors, but that just reinforces my point. The natives didn't take the invasion of Europeans seriously? And now what's left is just a shadow of what was. My motives for this attack are not at all personal. Actually, the Hispanic community was not my target before I read The Great Replacement. This manifesto will cover the political and economic reasons behind the attack, my gear, my expectations of what response this will generate, and my po personal motivations and thoughts. So, the Hispanic invasion of Texas. Damn, didn't they say that just a second ago in Fox News? Yep. Donald Trump Fox News warned of a migrant invasion before the El Paso gunman struck. Tucker, fuck off. Tucker complains about, fuck off. Tucker complains about U.S. troops helping foreign countries. What about our country? We're being invaded. No offense to the Ethiopian Navy, but we could use American troops a lot closer to Tijuana than the Horn of Africa. Fuck off. It's an invasion, you know that? I say invasion, they say, isn't that terrible? I don't know what... <sighs> Who formats their site like this? I don't know what these people are thinking. You know it's your country too. What are you thinking? Okay, so... Very hot take, Vosh. Wow. Definitely not brought about by literally every other person from a left-leaning perspective who's covered this. Wow. There's a link between mainstream conservative thought and the rhetoric of the person who did the mass shootings? Inc wow. What? Wow. Did... Damn. I must have woke up pretty early in the morning to, um, to, to have thought of that one, huh? Damn. Only here at Vosh. Listen, the, here's what I want to say about this, okay? There, the shooting at El Paso was not extreme conservatism. It was mainstream conservatism. I don't mean that facetiously. I don't just mean that in like, oh, oh, well, he was inspired by common talking points. I mean, this is part and parcel to mainstream conservatism. Unquestionably. In every respect. Neighbors. In every respect. So when you think of conservatives in America... Maybe some of you still have this impression. Maybe when some of you think of conservatives in America, you think of like reactionary dipshits. You think of trickle down economics. You think of maybe you think like a small government if you're very naive and you think they care about that. I don't want you to think about those things, okay? Conservatives, conservatism in America stands for the ethnic and cultural purge of this country. All of their rhetoric for the past 40 years has reinforced this point. If you trace all the rhetoric of conservatism back to its roots, at least when you're speaking of social principles, you're looking at the fundamental um, genetic inferiority of black people. You're looking at the torrent of subhuman Mexicans coming from the southern border to break our laws, to bring gang members in, to rape our women to steal our work, and then paradoxically to actually be very lazy and just re reside in the welfare system. All of it, all of conservatism is built upon the exact same social principles that are perpetuated today by neo-Nazis. Really, the only fundamental difference is whether you uh, venerate Israel or you see it and the people who run it as the source of the world's problems. But that's really it can we find a policy position that distinguishes a fascist 
ignoring the Jewish question, a fascist from a conservative? Can we think of a difference fundamentally, a distinction there to be looked at? I, I can't. Conservatives have been the ones pushing anti-LGBT rhetoric for decades. They've pushed the idea that gay people and the AIDS they suffer, they're um, sinners that are being punished for their um, impropriety. They have pushed the idea that trans people are abominations. They have defunded research concerning these groups of people. Trump himself has recently um, tried to remove mention of these groups from the White House website, sort of tacitly denying their existence. If you want to look at economic policies, most conservative economic policy is about transferring money from poor ethnic communities and to a lesser extent, poor white communities out of the hands of them and towards wealthier people, perpetuating the hierarchy, perpetuating that social ostracization. Everything about the system fundamentally matches up with what you would expect from a fascist. The um, constant um, adulation for a mythical pastime that never actually existed, this glorification of our ancestors, the belief that there is a racial, religious, cultural root to the success of this country. The idea that intellectualism makes you an effet snob. American anti-intellectualism is, I mean, that's as American as apple pie, really. Um, American conservatives are fascists, or if they aren't, if they genuinely aren't, they're so unaware of the principal tenets of uh, conservatism in America that they don't even understand what it is they're pushing for. I understand this may sound a little bit facetious, but I assure you I'm being entirely serious when I say this. American conservatives are fascists. Fascism is what pushes us to wage indefinite wars in foreign countries on shaky grounds, to do so with religious justification, to do so using the idealization of um, glory, combat, honor, dying for one's nation as we have for a great long time. Fascism is what leads us to believe that engagement with um, with concepts that might lead to people questioning the hyper-nationalism that has defined our foreign policy for 80 years is a sign of, um, of, of, of treason or of traitorousness. This is... <laughs> Fascism is what leads to the fundamental subversion of democracy that Republicans have been perpetuating for, I mean, the voter ID laws. Where was that place recently where Republicans were caught committing massive voter fraud? Where was that place? Georgia, North Carolina, hold on. Tools, anytime, past month. Election fraud in North Carolina leads to new charges for Republican operative. That's right, some folks were arrested for this, weren't they? It's funny, Republicans constantly cry about the threat that voter, um, that voter abuse poses to this democracy, but... Um, it seems like they're the one who keeps doing it. They're also the ones who push against um, any kind of um, audit or external regulation for the ballot um, box production companies that seem to have some pretty substantial financial ties to the Republican establishment. Now, I'm not here dragging exclusively um, um, Republicans because Democrats are genuinely not that much better. Um, they are part and parcel. They operate on the same wavelength. The Republicans will push us further right. The Democrats will keep us from moving further left, giving small capitulations to the more radical elements of this country and its constituencies to prevent any real change. That's a that's a a, a classic meme. Um, and for all their cries of free market, um, you know, laissez-faire e economics, uh, Republicans are usually the ones who push for protectionism when it benefits the companies they have financial interests in. So that's all I really have to say about that. It's a really boring topic, honestly. It feels like a cold take, really. Oh, all Republicans are fascists. It, it feels reductive, but I don't know what else to say. They, they are. Uh, all Republicans, all conservatives are in the broadest possible sense, enemies of the country and enemies of everyone who live here. Um, there are some of them blissfully unaware of the fact that that's what they are, but that's their fault, not mine.
I don't know. <sighs> there was another shooting. Unfortunately. This one was in Dayton. Dayton, Ohio. I'm sure we're familiar with it. This memer right here. The Dayton shooter. We heard about this fellow. Connor Betts. That's kind of a funny name. You know what's funny? For um, quite some time now, for years, white nationalists and far-right um, political agitators have been responsible for the lion's share of terrorism in this country. Huge, huge, huge chunk of it. It's all been conservatives angry about Jews, angry about black and brown people, angry about Muslims. And they commit the terrorism, partly because the right is the most unhinged. Their constituents, I think, demonstrate um, a pretty severe uh, departure from reality, um, partly because they're the ones who are being targeted most specifically by um, reactionary propaganda. Um, but we recently had a little bit of a mix up. The Dayton, Ohio shooter, by all accounts, seems to be left leaning. I don't like people online right now who are saying he wasn't because of his politics. He very clearly, um, in the um, uh, at least in the aesthetics of his life, um, was a leftist. Um, so I'm not going to do what Republicans do and say that oh, we should just focus on mental illness here. We shouldn't you know, condemn them for their political leanings. I'm going to do what we leftists should be doing. I'm going to say that it is funny that we finally have a mass shooting committed by a left-leaning person, and it's not done because they're left-leaning. It's done because they're a fucking incel. See, when we say, oh, this was a shooting committed by a right-wing extremist, we don't say it just because they were a right wing extreme. If you, this is not typically how it works. If you go on in there uh, into a Walmart and shoot up a bunch of people, and you then you get shot by the police, and then they find your Twitter or Facebook or whatever, and you like liked a couple of Trump tweets or whatever, they don't then go on to say white supremacist, racially motivated shooting at Walmart, gunning down brown black people. That doesn't happen. Usually, the shooting is in some way indicated to be a product of your political beliefs. So you write a manifesto or you post online saying i'm gonna fucking do it i'm gonna take out these fucking spicks and n-words or some shit like that usually these people do that because again these people are pretty much to a man unhinged um but just because a person is right-leaning doesn't mean a shooting committed by a right-leaning person is a right-leaning shooting except it always is with right-leaning people because when right-leaning people do shootings, it's usually because they're right-leaning. This motherfucker right here, this, my boy, incel rising up, Connor Betts, pardon the irreverence, shot and killed a great many people, nine people dead, one of whom was his sister. Let's learn a little bit about Connor Betts, okay? I'm going to sort of read down this Wall Street Journal article, all right? I'm going to slide my way on down. If you say spick, then you got to say the N-word too. Don't be hypocritical, Vosh. Spick is like a tier three slur. The N-word's like a tier six. I got to drop those ones hard, you know? Um, I'm going to slide my way down this um, Wall Street Journal article. We're going to find some characteristics of the Connor Betts shooting and his sort of persona. We're going to try and determine to what extent exactly was his shooting motivated by left-leaning political values. So if I thought about a left-leaning shooting, like a like a leftist terrorist attack, I would think about an attack on a police station or an ICE facility, which happened fairly recently. I would talk about something involving environmentalism. I would think about an attack on like a, like a very wealthy area or, or like a country, something like that. You know what I mean? Um, that, that sort of thing. I, I wouldn't, that, like that's sort of what would come to my mind. So let's see what we get here, okay? Kill to punch people. Da -na 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 -na. Okay. Adds to an emerging portrait of Betts as a troubled but sometimes magnetic person. In high school, he compiled a list of people he wanted to harm. More recently, he performed in a rock band called Menstrual Munchies, according to Friends and Miss Johnson. 
that's not super relevant. It's just it's just the name of a band, guys. Come on. Wrote a letter for an old girlfriend to pin to the girlfriend's door, and it said, Welcome to your neighborhood. You can't escape your past. And he signed the letter, Your Neighbor. Said he had dark thoughts. Neat, neat. The juicier shit is down here. Hold on. Others who knew Betts growing up said a list was discovered in his high school locker of students, mostly girls, who he wanted to harm. Made violent statements, often couched as jokes. Might be bipolar or have obsessive compulsive disorder, bonded with others over mental illness, went to shooting ranges. Miss Johnson said she never saw a performance by the band Betts was in, but she did see pictures of Betts wearing a dress and mask over his face. The group, this is his band, played a style of music with violent lyrics directed at women that is sometimes called gore grind or porno grind. She said she thought he was the screamer for the band. He told me they were bad, and I believed them. He frequently drank to excess. His small bedroom was painted black and had metal band posters on the walls. <sighs> he would have been the first to tell you that he hated himself, Miss Johnson said. I think it was that, mixed with some impulsivity and just being mad at the world. So, I'm going to pull a couple of assertions here. This kid, Connor Betts, may well have been a left-leaning person. What they also were, probably, was disturbed, as many mass shooters are. And I see absolutely no reason to believe, from what he did and from what we know of him at this point in time, uh, that his shooting was motivated by his left-leaning politics. He had a harm list. He had a rape list. He was described as disturbed and having had emotional and mental troubles in the past. Any messages or posts or uh, manifestos of him writing about how he wants to, um, you know, take back wealth for the common man and do whatever it takes to destroy the 1%. Doesn't really seem to show. So fun for you folks. Anytime somebody um, throws the, but what about the Dayton, Ohio shooter, shooter, Antifa, super soldier, mass shooting, terrorist attack, left leaning, blah, blah. That's what you should tell them. Hey there. You hysterical fuckhead. When we say white nationalist shootings are on the rise, we don't mean white nationalists are doing shootings. We mean that the shootings are white nationalists, that they are targeted and motivated by their politics. Dayton, Ohio's was not motivated by his left-leaning politics. Try again, you absolute buffoon. That's what you have to say to them. That's what you got to go with, okay? Okay. <laughs>